Section 15 of Aesop's Fables, a new translation. Written by Aesop, translated by V. S. Vernon Jones. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This section has been read by Rosalind Carlyle. The Lion, Jupiter, and the Elephant The lion, for all his size and strength, and his sharp teeth and claws, is a coward in one thing. He can't bear the sound of a cock crowing, and runs away whenever he hears it. He complained bitterly to Jupiter for making him like that, but Jupiter said it wasn't his fault. He had done the best he could for the lion and, considering this was his only failing, he ought to be well content. The lion, however, wouldn't be comforted, and was so ashamed of his timidity that he wished he might die. In this state of mind he met the elephant and had a talk with him. He noticed that the great beast cocked up his ears all the time as if he were listening for something, and the lion asked him why he did so. Just then a gnat came humming by, and the elephant said, Do you see that wretched little buzzing insect? I am terribly afraid of its getting into my ear. If it even once gets in, I am dead and done for. The lion's spirits rose at once when he heard this. For, he said to himself, if the elephant, huge as he is, is afraid of a gnat, I needn't be so much ashamed of being afraid of a cock was ten thousand times bigger than a gnat. THE PIG AND THE SHEEP A pig found his way into a meadow where a flock of sheep were grazing. The shepherd caught him, and was proceeding to carry him off to the butchers, when he set up a loud squealing and struggled to get free. The sheep rebuked him for making such a to-do, and said to him, Mah. The shepherd catches us regularly, and drags us off just like that, and we don't make any fuss. Hmm, no, I dare say not, replied the pig, but my case and yours are altogether different. He only wants you for wool, but he wants me for bacon. The Gardener and His Dog A gardener's dog fell into a deep well from which his master used to draw water for the plants in his garden, with a rope in a bucket. Failing to get the dog out by means of these, the gardener went down into the well himself in order to fetch the dog up. But the dog thought he had come to make sure of drowning him, so he bit his master as soon as he came within reach, and hurt him a good deal, with the result that the gardener left the dog to his fate, and climbed out of the well, remarking, It serves me quite right for trying to save so determined a suicide. The Rivers and the Sea Once upon a time all the rivers combined to protest against the action of the sea in making their waters salty. When we come to you, said they to the sea, we are sweet and drinkable, but when once we have mingled with you, our waters become as briny and unpalatable as your own. The sea replied shortly, Keep away from me, and you'll remain sweet. The Lion in Love A lion fell deeply in love with the daughter of a cottager, and wanted to marry her. But her father was unwilling to give her to so fearsome a husband, and yet he didn't want to offend the lion, so he hit upon the following expedient. He went to the lion and said, I think you will make a very good husband for my daughter, but I cannot consent to your union unless you let me file down your teeth and pare your nails, for my daughter is terribly afraid of them. The lion was so much in love that he readily agreed that this should be done. It was soon, however, as he was thus disarmed, the cottager was afraid of him no longer, but drove him away with his club. The Beekeeper 
A thief found his way into an apiary when the beekeeper was away and stole all the honey. When the keeper returned and found the hives empty, he was very much upset and stood staring at them for some time. Before long, the bees came back from gathering honey and, finding their hives overturned and the keeper standing by, they made for him with their stings. At this, the beekeeper fell into a passion and cried, you ungrateful scoundrels, you let the thief who stole my honey get off scot-free, and then you go and sting me who have always taken such good care of you. The moral of the story is that when you hit back, you should make sure that you have got the right man. The Wolf and the Horse A wolf on his rambles came to a field of oats, but, not being able to eat them, he was passing on his way when a horse came along. Look, said the wolf, here's a fine field of oats. For your sake I have left it untouched, and I shall greatly enjoy the sound of your teeth munching the ripe grain. But the horse replied, hmph, if wolves could eat oats, my fine friend, you would hardly have indulged your ears at the cost of your belly. The moral here is that there is no virtue in giving to others what is useless to oneself. The Bat, the Bramble, and the Seagull A bat, a bramble, and a seagull went into partnership and determined to go on a trading voyage together. The bat borrowed a sum of money for his venture, the bramble laid in a stock of clothes of various kinds, and the seagull took a quantity of lead and so they set out. By and by a great storm came on, and their boat with all the cargo went to the bottom. But the three travellers managed to reach land. Ever since then the seagull flies to and fro over the sea, and every now and then dives below the surface, looking for the lead he's lost, while the bat is so afraid of meeting his creditors that he hides away by day and only comes out at night to feed and the bramble catches hold of the clothes of every one who passes by, hoping some day to recognise and recover the lost garments. The moral of this story is that all men are more concerned to recover what they lose than to acquire what they lack. The Dog and the Wolf A dog was lying in the sun before a farmyard gate, when a wolf pounced upon him and was just going to eat him up, but the dog begged for his life and said, You see how thin I am and what a wretched meal I should make to you now. But if you will only wait a few days, my master is going to give a feast. All the rich scraps and pickings will fall to me, and I shall get nice and fat. Then will be the time for you to eat me. The wolf thought this was a very good plan and went away. Some time afterwards he came to the farmyard again, and found the dog lying out of reach on the stable roof. Come down, he called, and be eaten. You remember our agreement? But the dog said coolly, My friend, if you catch me lying down by the gate there again, don't you wait for any feast. The moral here is once bitten, twice shy. The Wasp and the Snake a wasp settled on the head of a snake, and not only stung him several times, but clung obstinately to the head of his victim. Maddened with pain, the snake tried every means he could think of to get rid of the creature, but without success. At last he became desperate, and crying, Kill you I will, even at the cost of my own life, he laid his head with the wasp on it, under the wheel of a passing wagon, and they both perish together. The Eagle and the Beetle An eagle was chasing a hare, who was running for dear life, and was at her wit's end to know where to turn for help. Presently she espied a beetle, and begged it to aid her. So when the eagle came up, the beetle warned her not to touch the hare, which was under its protection but the eagle never noticed the beetle because it was so small, then seized the hare and ate her up. The beetle never forgot this and kept an eye on the eagle's nest, and whenever the eagle laid an egg, it 
climbed up and rolled it out of the nest and broke it. At last the eagle got so worried over the loss of her eggs that she went up to Jupiter, who is the special protector of eagles, and begged him to give her a safe place to nest in. So he let her lay her eggs in his lap. But the beetle noticed this, and made a ball of dirt the size of an eagle's egg, and flew up and deposited it in Jupiter's lap. When Jupiter saw the dirt, he stood up to shake it out of his robe, and, forgetting about the eggs, he shook them out too, and they were broken just as before. Ever since then, they say, eagles never lay their eggs at the season when beetles are about. The moral of this story is that the weak will sometimes find ways to avenge an insult, even upon the strong. The Fowler and the Lark A fowler was setting his nets for little birds, when a lark came up to him and asked him what he was doing. I am engaged in founding a city, said he, and with that, he withdrew to a short distance and concealed himself. The lark examined the nets with great curiosity, and presently, catching sight of the bait, hopped onto them in order to secure it, and became entangled in the meshes. The fowler then ran up quickly and captured her. "'What a fool I was!' said she. "'But at any rate, if that's the kind of city you are founding, "'it'll be a long time before you find fools enough to fill it.'" THE FISHERMAN PIPING A fisherman who could play the flute went down one day to the seashore with his nets and his flute, and, taking his stand on a projecting rock, began to play a tune, thinking that the music would bring the fish jumping out of the sea. He went on playing for some time, but not a fish appeared. So at last he threw down his flute and cast his net into the sea and made a great haul of fish. When they were landed and he saw them leaping about on the shore, he cried, You rascals, you wouldn't dance when I piped, but now that I've stopped you can do nothing else. The Weasel and the Man a man once caught a weasel, which was always sneaking about the house, and was just going to drown it in a tub of water when it begged hard for its life, and said to him, Surely you haven't the heart to put me to death. Think how useful I have been in clearing your house of all the mice and lizards which used to infest it, and show your gratitude by sparing my life. Mm, you have not been altogether useless. I grant you, said the man, but who killed the fowls, who stole the meat? No, no, you do much more harm than good, and die you shall. The Ploughman, the Ass and the Ox A ploughman yoked his ox and his ass together, and set to work to plough his field. It was a poor makeshift of a team, but it was the best he could do, as he had but a single ox. At the end of the day, when the beasts were loosed from the yoke, the ass said to the ox, Well, we've had a hard day. Which of us is to carry the master home? The ox looked surprised at the question. Why, said he, you to be sure, as usual. End of section 15